Pioneer Zero was a failed United States space probe that was designed to go into orbit around the moon, carrying a television camera, a micrometeorite detector and a magnetometer, as part of the first International Geophysical Year Science payload. It was designed and operated by the Air Force Ballistic Missile Division as the first spacecraft in the Pioneer program and was the first attempted launch beyond Earth orbit by any country, but the rocket failed shortly after launch. The probe was intended to be called Pioneer, but the launch failure precluded that name. The spacecraft consisted of a thin cylindrical midsection with a squat truncated cone frustum of 16.5 cm high on each side. The cylinder was 74 cm in diameter and the height from the top of one cone to the top of the opposite cone was 76 cm. Along the axis of the spacecraft and protruding from the end of the lower cone was an 11 kg solid propellant injection rocket and rocket case, which formed the main structural member of the spacecraft. Eight small low-thrust solid propellant velocity adjustment rockets were mounted on the end of the upper cone in a ring assembly which could be jettisoned after use. A magnetic dipole antenna also protruded from the top of the upper cone. The shell was composed of laminated plastic and was painted with a pattern of dark and light stripes to help regulate temperature. An image-scanning infrared television system of the Naval Ordnance Test Station designed to study the moon's surface, particularly the part normally unseen from Earth. A diaphragm, microphone assembly to detect micrometeorites. A micrometeorite hitting the diaphragm would generate an acoustic pulse that would travel through the diaphragm to the microphone. The microphone contained a piezoelectrical crystal that rang at 100 kc under influence of the acoustic pulse. A bandpass amplifier would amplify the signal, so it could be detected. A search coil magnetometer with nonlinear amplifier to measure the Earth's, Moon's and interplanetary magnetic field. At the time it was not known whether the Moon had a magnetic field or not. The spacecraft was powered by nickel-cadmium batteries for ignition of the rockets, silver cell batteries for the television system, and mercury batteries for the remaining circuits. Radio transmission was on 108.06 MHz, a standard frequency used by satellites in the International Geophysical Year, through an electric dipole antenna for telemetry and Doppler information and a magnetic dipole antenna for the television system. Ground commands were received through the electric dipole antenna at 115 MHz. The spacecraft was to be spin-stabilized at 1.8 revolutions per second, the spin direction approximately perpendicular to the geomagnetic meridian planes of the trajectory. Pioneer Zero was launched on 4 missile number 127 at 12 hours 18 minutes and 0 seconds Greenwich Mean Time on 17 August 1958 by the Air Force Ballistic Missile Division, only 4 minutes after the scheduled launch time. It was destroyed by an explosion of the first stage of the Thor booster, 73.6 seconds after lift-off at 15.2 km altitude, 16 km downrange over the Atlantic Ocean. The failure was suspected to be due to a turbo pump bearing that came loose, causing the liquid oxygen pump to stop. The abrupt loss of thrust caused the Thor to lose attitude control and pitch downward, which caused the LOX tank to rupture from aerodynamic loads and resulting in complete destruction of the launch vehicle. Erratic telemetry signals were received from the payload and upper stages for 123 seconds after the explosion, and the upper stages were tracked to impact in the ocean. The original plan was for the spacecraft to travel for 2.6 days to the moon at which time a TX-86 solid propellant motor would fire to put it into a 29,000 km lunar orbit which was to nominally last for about two weeks. Air Force officials stated that they were not surprised at the failure, adding that, it would have been more of a shock had the mission succeeded. It was the only mission in the Project Able one probes entirely run by the Air Force Ballistic Missile Division, as subsequent missions were conducted by NASA. Pioneer 1 was an American space probe, the first under the auspices of NASA, which was launched by a Thor Abel rocket on the 11th of October 1958. It was intended to orbit the moon and make scientific measurements, but due to a guidance error failed to achieve lunar orbit and was ultimately destroyed upon re-entering Earth's atmosphere. The flight, which lasted 43 hours and reached an apogee of 113,800 kilometers, was the second and most successful of the three Thor Abel space probes. Pioneer 1 was fabricated by Space Technology Laboratories, a division of Ramo Wooldridge Corp., and consisted of a thin cylindrical midsection with a squat truncated cone on each side. The cylinder was 74 cm in diameter and the height from the top of one cone to the top of the opposite cone was 76 cm. Along the axis of the spacecraft and protruding from the end of the lower cone was an 11 kg solid propellant injection rocket and rocket case, which formed the main structural member of the spacecraft. Eight small low-thrust solid propellant velocity adjustment rockets were mounted on the end of the upper cone in a ring assembly which could be jettisoned after use. 
a magnetic dipole antenna also protruded from the top of the upper cone. The total mass of the spacecraft after Vernier separation was 34.2 kg, after injection rocket firing it would have been 23.2 kg. The three-stage Thor Abel vehicle consisted of a modified Air Force Thor IRBM SEC total impulse. The scientific instrument package had a mass of 17.8 kg and consisted of an image scanning infrared television system to study the moon's surface to a resolution of 0.5 degrees, an ionization chamber to measure radiation in space, a diaphragm microphone assembly to detect micrometeorites, a spin coil magnetometer to measure magnetic fields to 5 microgauss, and temperature variable resistors to record the spacecraft's internal conditions. The spacecraft was powered by nickel cadmium batteries for ignition of the rockets, silver cell batteries for the television system, and mercury batteries for the remaining circuits. The radio transmission was on 108.06 MHz through an electric dipole antenna for telemetry and Doppler information at 300 mW and a magnetic dipole antenna for the television system at 50W ground commands were received through the electric dipole antenna at 115 MHz. The spacecraft was spin-stabilized at 1.8 RPS, the spin direction was approximately perpendicular to the geomagnetic meridian planes of the trajectory. Two days after the failure of Pioneer Zero on 17 August 1958, 4-129, the backup vehicle, was erected on LC-17B in preparation for a September attempt. The post-flight investigation of Pioneer Zero pointed to a turbo pump failure, which had also caused the loss of Thor Abel 116 in April. This was followed by the failure of an Atlas launch on 18 September, so the Air Force moved to replace the turbo pumps in their inventory of Thor and Atlas missiles. Thor 129 was pulled from the pad for modifications and replaced with Thor 130. On the 11th of October 1958, Pioneer 1 lifted off smoothly, but the guidance system steered the Thor slightly too high and fast, causing the second stage to be lofted 3 degrees higher than intended. As a result, it shut off 10 seconds earlier than planned, and also bumped the third stage during separation. The third stage was left pitched up about 15 degrees and suffering a velocity shortfall of about 500 feet per second. The Vernier engines on the third stage were fired to make up for the thrust deficit, but added only 150 feet per second of velocity, insufficient to escape Earth orbit. As a last resort, ground controllers decided that if they could not get Pioneer 1 to the moon, they would place it in a high Earth orbit by firing the attached solid rocket motor. The inaccurate launch trajectory had placed the probe on an orbital track that resulted in thermal heating and cooling beyond what the primitive temperature control system could handle. The probe's internals fell to near freezing temperatures, rendering the solid motor igniter inoperable. Pioneer 1 reached a total distance of 113,800 km before beginning its descent back to Earth. The spacecraft was launched from LC-17A at Cape Canaveral at 8 hours 42 minutes and 0 seconds Greenwich Mean Time but it did not reach the moon as planned due to a programming error in the upper stage causing a slight error in burnout velocity and angle. This resulted in a ballistic trajectory with a peak altitude of 113,800 km around 1300 local time. The real-time transmission was obtained for about 75% of the flight, but the percentage of data recorded for each experiment was variable. Except for the first hour of flight, the signal-to-noise ratio was good. The spacecraft ended transmission when it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere after 43 hours of flight on 13 October 1958 at 3.46 Greenwich Mean Time over the South Pacific Ocean. A small quantity of useful scientific information was returned, showing the radiation surrounding Earth was in the form of bands and measuring the extent of the bands, mapping the total ionizing flux, making the first observations of hydromagnetic oscillations of the magnetic field, and taking the first measurements of the density of micrometeorites in the interplanetary magnetic field.